I'm Laura Allison, and this is a program, a teaching program called Presenting the King. So happy that you could join us. I am in the process of a series called Open Heaven. Such an interesting phrase. It's in the Bible many different times in various forms and ways. Um, and this is the second teaching in this series, Open Heaven. So. Before we go into the teaching, I'd like to make you aware of some of our resources. Um, I have uh, many conferences uh, for the purpose of the presence of the Lord and, and revival. And in these conferences, we have amazing visitations and heaviness of the presence of the Lord and the singers and the musicians who are all anointed really professionals from around the nation of the United States um, come and they begin to play at the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so we had a series from this spontaneous worship called Firestorm Prophetic Worship. This was born out of our conferences and recorded live. And so you can get these uh, CDs from our website, celebrationministries.com, but also from iTunes, Spotify, and many of the streaming things. But just uh, this one, this particular one is called Enraptured. And since we're talking about the open heaven in this, uh, in this hour, we want to um, talk about what the, the feeling is like when heaven opens and when we, we, we see the presence of the Lord. And in these Firestorm Prophetic Worship CDs, you can experience much worship that is literally taken from around the throne of God. So, how do we open heaven is the title of the teaching today. Um, we talked in, in the first uh, teaching of this about what is an open heaven. And, and actually, you know, the Lord teaches us to, uh, to pray in earth as it is in heaven. And how does that happen? You know, <laughs> does it just kind of blop? Is it plopped there? Is it, does it come and go? Um, and there are many times when the presence of the Lord is so powerful the way it is uh, in some of our services and others around the world and, and, uh, and the presence of the Lord, miracles, you know. And then at other times we pray and it seems like the Lord seems like he's a million miles away, which, which you know, um, the throne of heaven, we don't, we don't know where that is except that it says that it is in us, the, the kingdom of heaven is in us, um, but yet... We want to go, you know, where, where is God? Is, is he far away from us uh, or is this just perception? And, um, you know, how do I get in there? Well, it's so interesting <laughs> because the, the, the Bible talks about doors and gates. You know, lift up your head so ye gates that the king of glory may come in. Such an interesting scripture. Gates and what gates and come in where? What does that mean? So when we look at Revelation 4.1, uh, my Bible has a little subtitle there that says uh, the throne room of heaven. And he says, after these things I looked, now watch the sequence of this. I looked and behold, a door was standing open in heaven. <clears throat> and the first voice which I heard <clears throat> was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here, come up here, so interesting. And I will show you things which much take, must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven. Okay, so obviously the revelator, John the revelator, was looking because he said he looked. So there's a key. We have to look. So he looked, and then he saw. So that's a kind of a conundrum there. Do we look first and see? Do we see and then we look? Oftentimes we... We see and then we look, but he looked first. And so this is a, a sign to us as we begin to seek the things of God and seek after God. So he looked and then he saw and then he heard and then there was an invitation. 
So we have to seek. If we want to have a door open to us in heaven, we have to begin to seek. And we have to expect, and, and, and then we will see, and even hear, and then there's a come. And, it, and he, it's so interesting. All that happened in verse 1, and then it wasn't until verse 2 where he said, immediately I was in the Spirit, <clears throat> and I saw in heaven. Now, Revelation 3, 7 through 9, um, we know this is uh, the, the uh, address to the church in Philadelphia. and He says he has the key of David. He opens, open, and no one shuts, and he shuts and no one opens. He said, I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door. <laughs> I have prayed for many, many years uh, since the beginning of my ministry. I prayed that scripture. I pray, God, that you will open the doors that no man can shut, and you will shut the doors that no man can open. Isaiah 22, 22, the keys of David. And so um, we... we even when we have a little strength, he says, for you have a little strength, but you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So even when our strength is small, we can pray that the Lord open that which cannot be shut if he opens it. And then, of course, the famous story in Genesis 28, 12. I grew up singing uh, that, that song. We used to have campfires at, at, at Christian camp, and, and we would sing, We are climbing Jacob's ladder, we are climbing. Jacob's ladder, we are climbing. Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. So interesting. I was singing that as a little child. I had no idea what that was. I didn't know necessarily who Jacob was or where the ladder was. <laughs> but it, it, was a, it had an anointing on it. I can still remember it. So this is where Jacob dreamed and there was a ladder set up that reached to heaven. And the angels were coming and going, coming and going. And so then in verse 16, he said he woke from sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't even know it. See, many, many times the Lord is near, and we don't even know it. And so he was afraid, and he said, How awesome this place is. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate. And some, some translations say the door. And then if you look up that Hebrew word, it's both gate or door of heaven. In other words, an opening into heaven. And angels were coming and going. There is an opening that angels come and go out of. So interesting. And also this was before the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And Jacob was worshiping the Lord just recognizing the door. Amazing. Amazing story. Then we see an interesting scripture in Isaiah 64. Verse 1, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. Now, why does there need to be a rending or a tearing or a breaking of the heavens? I'm sure many of those times in, in the time before the indwelling of the Spirit that, that there was a yearning for God. They didn't know why. But that yearning for God has survived the ages and man still can feel separated from God. So we want to kind of look at some what I would call heaven openers in the Bible. So interesting because these were great, some great prophets, uh, great men of faith even before that uh, veil was rent in the, in the holy, holy of Holies, even before Jesus came and made the way for the indwelling and then brought the Holy Spirit. But Enoch, in Jude 14, we're not going to look at that scripture, but it says in Jude, Jude 14, Enoch was, he prophesied and said, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Well, he saw that. He saw that in the future. He saw the future. He, he looked into heaven and he saw the future. And the Bible tells us um, in Genesis that he walked in the Amplified, it says, in the habitual fellowship. Oh, how wonderful that would be. In the habitual fellowship with God, and, and he walked in such fellowship with God that one day he was walking in heaven with God and not on the earth anymore. Now that's an open heaven, going, seeing into, as John the Revelator, and going 
as well. Elijah was a heaven opener. He was a man, uh, James 5 says he was a man that, like we are. He prayed that it would rain in the midst of great drought and famine. And then it rained and the heavens opened and the earth brought forth the fruit. So I love, though, my favorite part about Elijah. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It came to pass, 2 Kings 2.11, it came to pass that as they talked that there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, an interesting thing happened because Elijah caused that heaven to be opened and a double portion of his anointing he bequeathed, so to speak, or gave or gave the mantle to Elisha, and Elisha seized it, and in Elisha's ministry, there came extreme harvest. And you can see the, 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 the you know, in uh, 2 Kings 7, 1, he talks about, hear the word of the Lord tomorrow, a measure of fine flour be sold for, sold for a shekel. He saw harvest and multiplication in this double portion of the anointing. So, that would help us to understand that where there's open heaven, there's extreme harvest. And so we begin to pray and we begin to seek God and, and there, there can be that transferring heaven to earth, earth to heaven, heaven to earth. Now, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 3 says, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, God knows how he was caught up into paradise, caught up into heaven and heard unspeakable words, which it's not lawful for man to utter. So now these, these things in the Bible show us that that's possible. <laughs> Heaven open before us is possible and does happen. So how did they do it? What causes or what opens heaven? How can we become heaven openers? <laughs> so first of all, number one, prayer absolute prayer, communication. We look before we see. We look at the things which are not seen. The Bible tells us, look at the things which are not seen, not the things which are seen. So John looked at the things which are not seen and then began to see in the unseen realm. I love that. So, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 13, this is very famous and we've been praying it so much in these years of challenge. Uh, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or I command the locusts to devour the land, so if my people then, if my people which are called by my name shall number one, humble themselves, number two, pray, Number three, seek my face. We just saw that in John, with John the Revelator. And number four, turn from their wicked ways. In other words, repent. Then I hear heaven is opened. Then from my place on the other side of the shut door, I will hear and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So... When heaven is closed, or even when just heaven seems closed to our perception, then desperate prayer will restore that. Joel 2.12 says, Even now, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. And then in verse 17, he says, Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep as they pray between the porch and the altar, between the porch and the altar, seeking God, seeking God, seeking God. Earnest, uninhibited prayer, whether you see it, whether you feel it. If you can't feel anything, if you can't see anything, if you feel lost from God, if you feel like the heavens feel brass and you, you, you feel like your prayers aren't going, you have a measure of faith. If you have Christ in you, if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you have a measure of faith to act as these heaven openers in, did in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. And we see in the Bible, heaven openers, they used, they in faith, they sought and they prayed. So interesting, even Jesus felt that separation. Hebrews 5, 7 said he shrank 
from the horrors of the separation from the bright presence of the Lord. He was separated from the one that he is one with. So, in faith we pray. Number two, in faith we worship. Worship is, is even more personal because worship means to bow. Worship means to, to submit yourself. Worship means to bow in awe and in reverence. And so by faith, whether we can see or not, whether we can hear or not, whether we can experience or not, we bow in faith because the Bible tells us we are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Out of your belly, the Bible says, rivers of living water shall pour forth for, for, from the throne of God inside of us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So like, the, like Psalm 24 opened the gates that the King of glory, we open the gates of praise inside of us. We open the gates and we worship heaven in Worship is about heaven and earth. Worship is about connecting instead of bowing to separation and accepting separation. Um, in Isaiah 6, there's this massive vision that Isaiah, one of, God, one of heaven openers, one of our heaven openers in the Bible, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And we know that, that whole scripture. He saw him lie high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. But there was massive worship going on. The Bible says the seraph, and that, that Hebrew word is burning ones. The burning ones were flying and covering and, and hovering and covering their faces. And they were crying to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is filled with His glory. So they were worshiping and they were prophesying. And they were worshiping and they were prophesying. And it says, at the sound of this worship, I just love that. At the sound, the doorposts and the thresholds, and I would, I would say the thresholds and the doorposts of heaven, the door that John the Revelator saw, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with the smoke of his presence and the incense. It's, it's, it's an incredible vision into what is happening in heaven. And so we experience that very same thing when in our conferences and I know in many other places around the world as we begin to worship the Lord, as we begin to cry out holy, as we begin to sing, worthy is the Lamb. That, that was slain, as we begin to see all of this, literally, we, some, sometimes you can even experience that shaking and, and your flesh becomes weak and you fall on the floor. And we've seen massive moves of God like that where, where there, we've seen the cloud, we've seen the smoke in the sanctuary, the physical sanctuary. We've seen gold dust flying in the air in the physical sanctuary because of the presence of the Lord and the extravagance of the worship, of the submission, just like the burning ones. And then we become like burning ones, crying out, holy, holy, holy. Now, it's an interesting concept, but number three, um, death and resurrection can produce that experience with the Lord where the heavens are opened. John 12, 24 said, says except a, a grain or a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any effect. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. It can fall into the ground and it must die because then it brings forth much fruit, much fruit. So from seed sown, great harvest comes. From an open heaven, great harvest comes. And so the Lord, the Lord says precedent is set over us of an open heaven and an extreme harvest as the prayers of the saints fill the bowls in heaven. Great harvest. So we contend even as we do in, in the, the priest weeping between the porch and the altar, the, the, the desperation if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face. 
We've been doing that all over the world here in this, in this challenging year. And it's producing mighty harvest. Even as heaven, as Enoch went up to heaven and, and Elijah and all of them, that's available to us. And I've seen so much of that in my own life as, as tragedies and circumstances have happened and deaths. Many of us, all of us have experienced challenging circumstances in the earth. But if we allow those dreams, if we allow those sorrows to fall into the earth, we submit those to the Lord and we worship in spite of that and we worship in faith, we, we speak in faith, we seek Him in faith. The Bible tells us that David, when his son died, it said he, he rose and he encouraged himself in the Lord. And so as we do that in, in repentance and in obedience as a lifestyle, then the heavens begin to be opened. Um, when Jesus was baptized, John baptized in the baptism of repentance. And Jesus submitted to him in the baptism of repentance. And when he did that, heaven opened and God spoke and said, uh, we have... Uh, Learn, he has learned obedience by the things he suffered. But the Lord said, Here is my beloved Son whom I'm well pleased. So we know that repentance and obedience open heaven. As a result, you know, disobedience closes heaven. Um, and we see that in Deuteronomy. Um, you know, if you don't obey the voice of the Lord, the heavens over your head will be bronze and the earth will be like iron but obedience is better than sacrifice. So, number five, we become then heavenly minded. John the Revelator was heavenly minded. He was looking and then seeing into heaven and then caught up in the spirit. He was heavenly minded. Colossians 3 verse 1, this will open heavens. So if you're risen in Christ, Seek the things which are above. Seek the things that are in heaven where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your things on these, your, your view, gaze, your mind on these things, not on the things of earth. So 2 Corinthians 4.16 then tells us, of course, so don't faint even though your, your outward thing is, you know, your body is perishing, you're getting older, the inward man is being renewed day by day because this light affliction is but for a moment and it works for us a much more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So there again, here's the scripture. We look at the things which are, not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So that means what? That means we're exercising our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears, our spiritual senses. We have to practice the things of the Spirit, just like we practice if we want to run a marathon. We practice and we run and we develop muscles and we begin to, to, to uh, strengthen our outer man. So we strengthen our inner man through prayer and through worship and through repentance and obedience and through seeking and through looking for the things of the Lord. We exercise our spiritual eyes. Ephesians 1.18 says, Then the eyes of your, of your understanding will be enlightened that you may know the hope that you're called to and what the riches of the glory of the Lord is in the, in, in the saints. So we meditate on the glory of the Lord. We set our sights on the things which are above. We, we identify where heaven is and then we go there. So the kingdom of heaven is in us and Jesus is the door. John 10, 9, I am the door. <laughs> so if anyone comes in through me, he will be saved and he will come in and he will go out freely, the Bible says. Heaven is inside of us. The presence of God is inside of us if we have received Jesus. And then even the second time, if we have 
receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, then we don't have to look way out somewhere for God because as we begin to pray, then heaven is opened. Heaven is opened in us. Heaven in us, Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of heaven is within you. That, that's applying to you today. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And so the Lord, it's His will to make known to us this glory and this majesty. He's not hiding the, Himself from us. He desires this for us. He is looking for us as we are looking for Him. And so revival and transformation and renewal begins within us. If you feel dead inside, if you feel like there's no hope. If you feel like you are separated from God, there is an open heaven waiting for you. If you just lift up your eyes, lift up your heart, look at the things which are not seen, use the faith that God has given you, and begin to seek Him with all of your heart because the Bible says if you seek, you will find. And I encourage you today, Wherever you are in your journey with God, there is more. There's always more. There's more, more. There's more than you know. And the more you know of God, the more you want to know because the more you know and realize that you don't know. <laughs> and so it's a cycle of life. So don't get on the cycle of death of I'm, I'm worthless, I'm hopeless, nothing's ever going to change. And, and that's a cycle of death. But let the cycle of life begin to move in you, just like John the Revelator, because that's how we open heaven. We look and we seek. We pray and we worship. We open our hearts. And in opening our hearts to God, God comes and helps us walk in this open heaven. So I pray for you today. I break the powers of despair, discouragement, depression, and oppression by the name and the power of Jesus Christ. And I proclaim an openness in you to the glory of the Lord, to the knowledge of God, to the, the tender mercies and loving kindnesses of the one who loves you most and the one who loves you best. Open your heart and the heavens will be open for you and you will fellowship with the living God. We love you today. Bless you. Beautiful one, beautiful.